Hey everyone, now that you have seen the demo, without wasting any time, let's get right into building it. So the only two modules that you need here is CV2 and NumPy. So we'll import them. So now that we've imported them, we are going to read in our image, which is done using the im read function. So it takes the name of the image as argument, which is test image.jpg. And now we are going to resize the image because when the images are bigger in size, OpenCV does not perform that well. So we are going to resize it. The first argument it needs is the image and the next argument is by how much you are going to resize it. So this depends on the image that you are going to use. So now we'll create the copy of an image so that we can display it later on, which is done using the copy function. And now we are going to convert a color image into grayscale. So which is done using cv2.convertColor. The first argument it takes is the image and the next argument would be cv2.color and then bgr to gray which is rgb and then we are going to convert it to grayscale and now let's see if it works well by displaying it so here i'll pass in the title which is just title and then the gray and i'm going to run the code now so this is the grayscale image of our original image now that we have converted our image into grayscale we are going to use the gaussian blur function to blur our image so Gaussian blur is a technique by which you smoothen out your image. So the first argument it takes is the image and the next argument is the kernel size and the third argument is a sigma value. So what this kernel size specifies is that a 2D matrix of 5 cross 5 dimension would be created and this matrix would be convolved or moved over your input image and a dot wise matrix multiplication would take place and the third argument is sigma. Sigma is a factor that determines how much blur would take place. So if you are not sure of what value of sigma to use, you could just put in a zero and this function would automatically calculate the value of sigma for you. So let's just demo the blurred image, which is I am show and the title, which is blur. And then the name of the image is blurred. So I'll just run the code. So this is our grayscale image and okay, the spelling of Gaussian is G-A-U. So I'll run the code again. So this is our blurred image and this is a grayscale image. So one thing that you observe here is that blurred image is a bit blur and smoothened out. So if you smoothen it out too much, you're going to lose this crucial edges, which play a vital role in canny edge detection that we are going to do next. So now that we have blurred the image, let's apply canny edge detection. So which is done using the canny function. So I'll just create a variable edged and cv2.canny. So the first function or the first argument that it takes is blurred. And the next argument would be two values called the minimum value and the maximum value. So this minimum value and maximum value are basically thresholding values. So every time you have an image, you would have a threshold for each of the pixel. Whenever the pixel threshold is greater than the maximum value, it would be considered as an edge. If it is lower than the minimum value, this is just discarded. Now here you have a you have an arc that comes in both max and uh, both above max and below max so in this case this edge is considered because if at least one of the point in the arc has its threshold more than the maximum value the entire edge would be considered so we'll just uh, display our edge uh, our canny edge which is cv2.im show and then canny and then the input and then the image name so i'll just run the code so this is our canny edge detection. So you can see that it has detected all the edges accurately, but it has detected a lot of noise too, like these parts are noise because we are just extracting this out of the image. So all this noise has to be removed. So we'll see how that is. So what we need to do now is that we need to extract our page or this boundary from our image. So this is the output of canny edge detection and we only care about the page or the boundary. So to extract this boundary, you have to use the find contours function in OpenCV. So we'll see how that is done. So first of all, the find contours function would return the image, the contours and the hierarchy. But we only care about the contours and the function is cv2.findContours. And the first argument that it needs is the output of the edge detection. The second would be the retrieval method. So we are going to retrieve it as a list. So it is retrieve list. And the third argument would be the approximation model. So here we are going to use something called as chain approx simple. So what this means is that the approximation model here is simple or only the necessary points are taken and all the redundant points would be removed. So there is one more approximation model called as chain approx none, which would consider all the points, but that is not needed for us here. 
So the next thing we are going to do is we need to extract the boundary which would be the biggest contour. So we are going to sort it in reverse order so that we could find it earlier. So we are going to pass in the contours and then we are going to use the key which is the contour area so that the biggest contour would be the first one. So that is the contour area and next we are going to give it as reverse equal to true so that it is sorted in reverse order. So now that we have sorted our contours we are going to run a loop for all the contours and then we are going to use something called as the arc length function. So what this function does is that it tries to find a square within our uh, image or within the contours. So the first argument that it takes would be the contours and the next thing is true. So what this true tells us is that it is trying to find a square or a closed shape. So if it is false it would be applicable for lines or curves. If it is true it would be applicable for closed shapes like square rectangles. So now whatever the arc length function returns wouldn't be a perfect square. So we are going to use something called as the polydp function. So we are going to use approx equal to cv2 dot uh, the function is approx polydp. So this is going to approximate whatever the arc length returns. The first thing is the contours and the second argument would be called as the epsilon value. So you have to tune this value according to your need. So for me 0 0.02 worked well. You have to tune these values. So here again 2 means that we are trying to detect a closed shape or a square. So now we are going to see if it actually returned the square by using uh, by seeing if it returned 4 points. So if it returns 4 points it would be a square. So we'll see if it is a square. So it's 4 here and then if it is a square we would just break out of this. So we would store it in a separate variable and then we would break out of this. So what this code does is that it would run through all the contours, try to find a square. So but the square wouldn't actually be a square. So we use the approx polydp function. So if the points are four in number, that means it is a square or a, rectang a rectangle. So whenever we find that we are going to break out of the loop. So now that we have found the boundary of our page using the contours technique, what we could do is we could display the top view or a bird eye view of our page. So this is accomplished using the get perspective transform function. But for the get perspective transform function to work, you could not directly supply your contours. So you need to find the endpoints of your image. So I found this pi image search tutorial that does exactly that. So they've written a piece of code that finds this endpoints which are highlighted in green here. So this is a formula based code. So what I did is I copied this code into a separate file and then I have imported this file here. So we are going to use this code to find the endpoints. So let's store it in the approx variable and we are going to use that code which is mapper.map and we are going to pass in our target which contains the final contours. And now we are going to define a boundary or a window for the final output to be displayed. So let's do that using numpy array. So the first thing would be the top left coordinates and next it would be the top right coordinates which should be 800 comma 0 and then the bottom right which would be 800 comma 800 and then the bottom right which would be 0 comma 800. So this is basically our window size. So now that we have defined we have found out the endpoints and the window size we could use the get perspective transform function. So let's just use that. It is cv2 dot get perspective transform. So the first argument that it needs is the approx or the endpoints, and the next argument would be the boundary size, which is points. And then to finally warp the perspective, there is something called as the warp perspective function. So we'll use that. And this would need the original image that we had copied earlier so this it would need the original image as the argument and then the output of the get perspective transform function and then the window size which will be 800 comma 800 so we'll just demo it and uh, see if we finally get our output or not so the name would be dst and i'll just run this here So there you go, you finally get this final scanned image. So it has eliminated all the unnecessary things and it has given you the top view or the bird eye view for this. So what we had done was, uh, I'll just summarize everything here. So initially we imported all the libraries or the modules. We read the image, we resized it because OpenCV does not work well with bigger images. Then we converted the image to grayscale. Then we smoothened it out by applying the Gaussian blur technique. 
then we extracted the edges using the canny edge detection then we finally found the boundary with the boundary that we need or the boundary of the page and once we found the boundary we applied the perspective transform function to get the top view or the bird eye view so this is pretty much it in this video thank you for watching and do subscribe